The 2012 draft produced a bevy of superstars, beginning with Andrew Luck. Round three, pick number 75, five spots after a punter, Russell Wilson. Luke Keekley, a top 10 pick that year. RG3, number two overall. Things didn't work out, although at first it looked like they were going to. Because Wilson and Luck ended up number four, number three on the Chris Sims top 40 quarterback countdown. Luck was four. Wilson was three. We are redrafting at least the top six picks from the 2012 draft based on the teams that had those picks, not who would you draft in those spots. The teams that had those picks as those teams were constructed at the time. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. After we get through the rig coin toss, go ahead. Oh, okay. do you, can, you want me to call it again? Uh, go I'm ahead. one for it, one. It, yep, go ahead. Let's see if you Kristen, can give me tails. It. Give me tails. Oh, man, Kristen, what's wrong with All you? Right. Jeez. Hey, he, he, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I almost didn't want to win this one. I'm thinking about deferring to you. um, Because I, 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 I think you would put Andrew Luck on the Colts still with the number one overall pick. And it's hard for me not to put Andrew Luck there, but we had an entire lost season for Andrew Luck. Russell Wilson, we haven't had a lost season. Russell Wilson has been a model of durability. And we've seen what Russell Wilson has done without a whole heck of a lot of help now. He did have the Legion of Boom early in his career. I, I tell you what, all things considered, I'm going Russell Wilson. Okay. I, he's got I the Super you. Bowl win. He's, he's, he's been healthy. I, I, I'm going Russell Wilson. Yeah, I, I hear you, Mike. I'm not mad at you there. I think I would have gone Russell Wilson with my number one pick, too. It's really close. I mean, whether you want to go Luck, Wilson, either way, you're going to be in good hands. But, yes, I think with the special skill set Wilson has shown and, you know, the fact that, yeah, the health thing, I think probably does. Just give them the slight advantage over Andrew Luck. But, gosh, I know both are phenomenal. I'm taking Andrew Luck with my pick. Let's just get that on the road right now, okay? I mean, we know, we know Russell Wilson's the man, definitely. Uh, it'd be funny to see him playing in a Colts uniform, but Andrew Luck is going to be my second pick or my pick to start my, my uh, first round because, yeah, I mean, Andrew Luck is a franchise, everything you want as far as a quarterback is concerned. And, yes, we lost that other one. Other than missing a full season. Yeah, other than that one year, there's nothing really you can look at in his game and go, oh, gosh, that's a glaring negative. Oh, he has this issue. I mean, his only issue was he wanted to win too much to where, you know, he put his body in harm too too often and, and of course it came back to bite him in the butt eventually but Andrew Luck has been phenomenal to this point and I think now he finally has a team around him to where you know there it's it's just going to accentuate what he is as a player I like that word accentuate yeah. I haven't pulled, pulled that I, one out in a while I, I like accentuate I'm not sure you've ever pulled it out before and if you've used <laughs> it before you probably didn't pronounce it correctly so kudos probably. to you thank you uh, here's where it gets very interesting yeah, because right? look the Cleveland Browns back in 2012, they got that third overall pick because they had traded up with the Vikings so they could draft Trent Richardson. Later in the round, they drafted quarterback Brandon Whedon. That didn't work out. And my guess would be that for the Browns that year, there would be a desire to get yourself a quarterback that could potentially be a difference maker with a proper level of coaching. Oh my gosh, I'm so torn here. I think they would have taken a quarterback, and I think they should have taken a quarterback. And I think the guy to take in this spot, I hate to say it, I, I don't think I can say it, I think it's Kirk Cousins. <laughs> That's a good thing. I think it is. I love it. That's you you taking him. That is amazing that you're taking I, him. Yeah, so I you're, mean, he's – I hear you. He, look – consider what the Browns have needed, where right. they've been, how bad they've been. Cousins comes in and Cousins, uh, you know, he, he has, look, yes, he hasn't been much more than a 500 level quarterback, but my God, what an improvement that would have been for the Browns over the past seven years. Yeah. Right. They still didn't make it to 500 last year. They were seven, eight and one. He's better than the Browns were last year. And we're praising the Browns. Well, yeah, definitely needed a quarterback. I mean, I, I hear that. And Kirk Cousins has shown that he is a franchise quarterback, certainly better than Brandon Whedon, uh, everything like that. So I, I just love that you picked Kirk Cousins. It's so great. You're a you're good old crack, you know, crack cancer challenge, buddy there you're picking but I mean I mean again he's exceeded expectations I do think there's other guys here you can make a case for as far as what would have fit in Cleveland because you know we have some players here that we know are so good at this point 
that you could justify almost the thought of saying best player on the table or something along those lines. Okay, so uh, I wouldn't have been mad at you there either way. Okay, so man, now I got to get down to the Minnesota Vikings here who at that time took Matt Khalil, right, to, to be the franchise tackle and do all that. That didn't exactly work out quite quite all well. Uh, I, okay, gosh, what do I want to do here? I, I guess if I look at the 2012 Vikings, and I just want to make sure one thing. Mike Zimmer was there in 2012, right? Am I no, right there? No, it was Leslie right Frazier. It was Leslie Frazier. That fits even better. Okay, so Leslie Frazier there. He's going to go defense here in this case scenario, okay, where we're looking at this football team, Leslie Frazier, the defensive system he comes from. I got a hard time saying they can pass up a Fletcher Cox here. I'm taking Fletcher Cox, all right? Uh, yes. I mean, they had some good – Good defensive lineman at the time, but Fletcher Cox has proven to be one of the best defensive players in football over the last three or four years. And anybody not named Aaron Donald, okay, this is the best defensive tackle in football. I mean, he's just a monster man. He's got great intensity. He can just beat people with power. And for a guy that's 315, 320 pounds, man, is he some athlete too. So I'm going to go with Fletcher Cox. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. Doesn't get enough recognition that I can certainly see the Vikings going that direction. Yeah, you know what? I think that would be a good selection, even though at the time the Vikings had real needs they, at the quarterback yeah. position. Now they had taken they had taken Christian Ponder the year before, right. so it would have been hard to justify taking a quarterback again. That's why I went with Kirk Cousins with the third pick, because the Browns took a quarterback that year later in round one and it didn't work out. And that's why I, you know, I, I'm tempted to give Nick Foles to the Jaguars here with, with pick number six, simply because... They have him now, and we've seen what Nick Foles can do. But I think Nick Foles has to have a certain level of coaching, needs to be in a certain system. I don't know that it would have worked in Jacksonville back in 2012. Um, and also, they had Blaine Gabbert that they had drafted a year before, so I don't think they do something like that. So I guess I go I, – I, I guess I go Luke Keekley. Right? I mean, he won a few spots lower to the Carolina Panthers. He's a guy who becomes the leader of your defense, the heart and soul of your defense, a guy who makes the rest of the team around him better. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, you can't go wrong. Now, they had Paul Puzlesny at the time, but yeah. he had been around for a while. You can find a way to make it work with both of them. And yeah, if you have you to could. trade Paul Puzlesny, you trade him because Keekley ended up being that good. And, right. you know, he kind of gets overlooked now that we've lost some of the leaders in Carolina. Thomas Davis is gone. Julius Peppers is gone. Keekley is still there. And, and I think still in many ways he's, he's the guy who's the center of that defense and he would have been the center of that defense in uh, Jacksonville going on nine years now. Yeah, no, years. I, I'm with you there. And you know what? We don't talk about Luke Keekley enough as one of the best defensive players in the sport. He does kind of go unnoticed under the radar. You know, he's not flashy all the time, but my gosh, it's a Hall of Fame career. I mean, there's no other way to say it to this point. I mean, Keekley has been absolutely phenomenal. You know, athleticism, reaction skills, physicality, found a way to change the way he kind of plays, right, to, to keep his head out of danger because we had the concussion concern concerns and then he's truly like a quarterback on the defensive side of the ball getting everybody organized and and uh, getting everybody in the right the right position so uh, that's a good pick by you there okay this is where the Dallas Cowboys I'm not sure what to do here I don't know if there's really an offensive guy that I look at and go okay that's that's where we go here that's worth that um, to me it's coming down to really I look at two positions for the Cowboys at that point it's either you know do I want to go with the pass rusher and a Chandler Jones or do I want to go with like a Bobby Wagner okay at the middle linebacker position because I think they have Sean Lee at the time already and their d their defensive linebackers were not horrible no, I'm wrong. I'm going I'm going Bobby Wagner here. I'm going Bobby Wagner at middle linebacker and I'm going to pair him with Sean Lee. Bobby Wagner just like we talked about with Luke Keekley, he's on he's on his way to Canton, Ohio. It's a Hall of Fame middle linebacker. I mean, he's, you could argue he's the best player on one of the best defenses we ever saw in the history of the NFL with the Legion of Boom. I look at that Cowboys roster at the time. They got DeMarcus Ware, they got Anthony Spencer. I don't think they're going to waste a pick on on a um on a Chandler Jones and then their cornerback play was pretty good at that 
time too with Brandon Carr and Morris Claiborne to where I don't want to go Stephon Gilmore. So I think the best player available and what somewhat of a need here would be that middle linebacker position. And you pair him together with Bobby Wagner, who is just does it all. I mean, physical as can be again, like Keekly. I mean, just unbelievable athlete, smart quarterback of the defense, always in the right position and does more than what he's asked at times too. Yeah, I think that's not a bad pick. I mean, Bobby Wagner quietly putting together those Hall of Fame credentials. You want to go one more round? Do we have time to go one more round? Are you ready? I'm ready. We got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at number seven. All right, the Buccaneers are on the clock. It's a it's a fast moving clock. Who's number um, eight? Stats. Let me just make sure I got it. Right. Number go eight ahead. is Miami. Number okay. eight's Miami. I, uh, you know, I'm down. I, you mentioned Chandler Jones, uh, and 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 I think Josh Norman. All due respect, is a little overrated. I'll go Chandler Jones. Okay. You're going to go Chandler Jones there? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I gotta, I'm got pulling – I did not expect to go here to the Miami. I'm just pulling it up real quick You want here. to take a break? How about sure. we take a Let's break? Take a Let's break. take a go break. Go ahead. Do it. You get extra time. The Thank clock you. is going to tick a little more draft, slowly so for it's all right. you. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Uh, we, we're going to take a quick break. Chris will make his eighth pick, his fourth pick, but the eighth and final pick, and we'll otherwise clean up shop and close up shop and get the hell out of here. PFT Live will be back right after this. We're redrafting the 2012 draft based on the teams that had those picks. I took Russell Wilson, number one, to the Colts. Sims has Andrew Luck to Washington, number two. I've got Kirk Cousins. Yes, Kirk Cousins. Hello, Kirk. How are you, yeah, Kirk? And I'm baby. saying Kirk, not That's Kirk. Your guy. To the Browns at number three. Fletcher Cox to the Vikings at four with Sims pick. I put Luke Keekley in Jacksonville at five. Sims has Bobby Wagner in Dallas at six. I put Chandler Jones, the pass rusher, in Tampa Bay at seven. Now, the last pick. Chris, you're on the clock. Dolphins, number eight. What do they do? Yeah, I mean, I could go. I'm, I'm thinking like T.Y. Hilton. Do I do Nick Foles? Okay. I mean, Melvin Ingram. I mean, this is the same draft. They ended up drafting Olivier Vernon to go across from Cameron Wake. But I think if you know they go Melvin Ingram there, gosh, that's going to be – I'm really stuck between – I want to go Melvin Ingram or David DeCastro. Those are the two guys I'm looking at, I think, more than anything here to go – Okay, I think and uh, okay, I think I'm coming to it. I just want to take one more look. Uh, yeah, I am going to go with Melvin the, Ingram. The, the Vikings are about to take your pick. I'm going Melvin Ingram. I'm going to go with Melvin Ingram at this time. Uh, yeah, Melvin Ingram. I mean, he's been one of the best edge defenders in football. Coming off the edge, he's great at stopping the run. Of course, he can uh, you know rush the passer and be really disruptive that way. Uh, but I look at that and go, man, him and Cameron Wake across from each other. That would be kind of a special, a special combination and maybe we're talking about a whole different thing down in Miami if those two were together yeah I agree with you on Melvin Ingram I mean but there are others there's other there others that, too I know hey it and tough. it's a quarterback driven league that year they took Ryan Tannehill would you take Ryan Tannehill or Nick Foles if you had to choose only between those two guys oh gosh that is a really good question um mm. I, I, I'm gonna say Nick Foles. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Nick Foles there over Ryan Tannehill. I like Ryan Tannehill more than you know he gets credit for at times. You know, you talked about it earlier in the show. Just you know, I, I think when healthy, if you go back and look at you know the wins and the numbers and and the things and the way he's played, it's it's a little better than I ever gave him credit for too. Until I kind of went back and gave it a deeper dive look. So uh, I like Ryan Tannehill, but Nick Foles, you know. The clutchness, the decision-making, and you know me, Mike, his ability to throw the football with pressure around him I think is as good as anybody in the NFL right now. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.